In the world of science, it goes without saying that the study of cosmology is truly baffling. With the cosmos being so vast, we truly don't know the full extent of what lies in deep space. From scientists to physicists, or even just your average space nerd, everyone seems to have a theory about why the universe is the way it is. Superfluid space-time, simulation theory, and the big splat are just some of the things that have emerged, and these theories are not only crazy, but quite literally, out of this world. Welcome to Fact Nominal. And in today's video, we'll be exploring some of the most outrageously bizarre theories about the universe. Charles Fourier was not only a famous left-wing political theorizer, but also was well known for being a pretty bizarre cosmological theorizer. He had a very interesting take on why the planets keep orbiting around the sun and, spoiler alert, it's not gravity. He truly was of the opinion that it was actually passion and love that kept these planets so close. Charles proposed that the planets, moons, and stars could be understood as living animals who each have senses just like us, sight, touch, and taste. They all seemed to be extremely passionate and in love with each other, and he even declared that the eclipses were actually caused by the sun engaging in a conjugal embrace of the moon. He further added that they even procreate, just like animals would. The piles of the planets are actually their genitals. The north was the male and south was the planet's female genitals. The planets each give out an aroma that they would release in order to attract the other planets and stars to themselves. This aroma is what he suggests would cause the planet to orbit around the sun and the satellites around their parent planet like lovesick puppies. Of course, the theory is not popular in the world of cosmology owing to the fact that it's just way too bizarre, even for space. But it's an interesting spin on trying to understand the solar system. Most of the theories you hear about the universe and space come from great physicists and scientists or even astronomers. But here's one right from a philosopher for you. Who says philosophers can't have their own theories, right? There is a theory that our entire universe might not actually be what it seems. The idea of simulation theory can be attributed to the prominent Oxford University philosopher Nick Bostrom. In his paper aptly dubbed, Are You Living in a Computer Simulation? Bostrom proposed that we could be virtual beings living in a computer simulation. If so, this simulation would most likely create perceptions of reality on demand rather than simulate all of reality all the time much like a video game optimized to render only the parts of a scene visible to a player. Hollywood has jumped on this idea and explored the topic further with movies like The Matrix. The most memorable thing about The Matrix series is the thought-provoking question it asks about the true nature of reality. What if all we experience in life is simply a simulation? Though the theory might seem a tad outlandish, it's actually quite popular, and there are many philosophers who actually take the idea very seriously. The science world, on the other hand, does not accept this explanation, and until there can be a true test of scientific theory, it will sit in the realm of science fiction. I wonder what Keanu would have to say about it. We have a city to burn. In 1913, the renegade Austrian astronomer Hans Orbiger made a very interesting assertion that the Milky Way is entirely made out of ice. He was not a believer in stars and according to him, there are a series of massive planet-sized ice blocks that are just floating through space encircling our entire solar system in an impenetrable white ring. The few actual suns that exist beyond this white ring shine their light through this frozen barrier, causing the light to reflect off the massive ice crystals. This is what he believed gave us the illusion of what we consider as bright stars in the sky. He was in fact quite adamant about his theory after even being shown pictures of the Milky Way by various scientists, but his answer was quite simple, that it was all a fake. When mathematical objections were brought up in regards to his proposal, he all but denied it and even claimed mathematics to be a bunch of lies. His theory was called the World of Ice Theory, according to which at some point of time in the galaxy's past, there has been a super sun which was orbited by a gigantic ice planet and eventually the planet fell into the super sun, melted, and it sped out lumps of rock and fire which ultimately settled into what we know as the planets of our solar system. Of course, today there is a lot of proof that can easily debunk this theory, but back in the day, you'd be surprised that there were actually many who truly believed his theory, including none other than Adolf Hitler. You may have seen the spooky picture from the surface of Mars with what seemed to be a bunch of human-like faces. 
The original image was taken on the planet by NASA's Viking 1 orbiter in grayscale back in 1976. Of course, some immediately jumped to the conclusion that there has to be aliens on the red planet after all. Because who else would leave those face-like imprints on the surface like that? There is a popular theory that came about after the release of this photo that the aliens really do exist, and they are constantly finding ways to leave evidence and proof of their existence. And we humans just haven't been quick enough to pick up on it yet. People began calling the picture the face on Mars, which from that angle does eerily resemble a face. And conspiracy theorist Richard Hoagland even went a step further to say it was most definitely a face. The picture taken of the region called Cydonia became the proof that everyone needed to believe that there has to be life other than our planet out there. He theorized that there has to be an ancient civilization that colonized Mars and that the face was just evidence of the alien city on Cydonia. While mankind is still looking for other habitable places beyond Earth with the best option being Mars, it looks like the aliens were many, many steps ahead of us. Sadly, this theory was very quickly debunked by NASA when they released colored images which showed the faces to be nothing but an illusion created by small hills. But many still argue, Hoagland included, that NASA has doctored the images and doesn't want us to know the truth. Remember Goldilocks from The Three Bears and how she found the delicious bowl of porridge that was just right for her, neither too hot nor too cold? After tasting the three bowls of porridge? Well, there is a theory about the universe being named after it. Just like Goldilocks, Earth seems to be the planet that seems to be just right for sustaining life. Some would argue that there are other close contenders like Mars or the moons of Jupiter or perhaps even Venus. But nothing really is quite like planet Earth. From the temperature, landscape, atmosphere, abundance of water, and distance from the sun, everything is, as Goldilocks would say, just right. Scientists refer to this as the anthropic principle, but in his book, Paul Davies calls this the Goldilocks enigma, which refers to the fact that all the physical laws that govern the universe are just right for the development of life. This is something that science just can't seem to explain with many arguing that this is where religion and God comes in. Intelligent design is also being named as one of the explanations that says there is a higher intelligence that chose to make the universe the way it is. One new theory suggests that space-time is actually a superfluid substance flowing with zero friction. Space-time, they say, can be understood as a superfluid composed of fundamental objects that we haven't been able to discover yet. Here, particles would travel through space-time just like waves in the ocean and the laws of fluid mechanics would be at work. As waves travel through a medium, they begin to lose their energy over time, which according to this theory is what would happen if photons traveled through this superfluid spacetime. A good example would be the Crab Nebula, the supernova remnant at a distance of 6,500 light years from the Earth. It emits high-energy X-ray and gamma-ray light, and by the time this light reaches our telescopes, the energy should have dissipated, owing to the liquid properties of spacetime. But so far, the observations have shown no such effect. If it turns out that space-time really is fluid, then it would be a very special liquid indeed. Though the theory is unlikely, if it were proven to be true that space-time is a superfluid where photons of varying energies at different speeds dissipate over time, it could mean that relativity does not hold in all situations. And we can only imagine the theoretical physicists out there going absolutely berserk. Currently, the space-time superfluid theory doesn't have a lot of supporters, but then again, neither did Einstein in the beginning. Our solar system could contain a giant unnamed planet. At least, that's what's being said according to the Planet X theory. Although the planet has not even been confirmed by scientists, some believe that there is an elusive planet in our solar system which has a huge orbit and such a strong magnetic pull that it can and will affect life on Earth. Does it seem a little suspicious to you? Well, it should. Those who believe in its existence are pointing at erratic weather patterns and seismic activity on the Earth as evidence. They have even claimed that the Planet X effect is setting the Earth up for a coming pole shift, one that could spark another ice age or catastrophic earthquakes. Many purporters of the theory also say that the various government organizations who know about it are forcing observatories to keep a close watch on the planet so as to prevent panic and will only release data about it when they deem it an unavoidable threat. 
Astronomers were quick to debunk this one, saying that if there really were a secret supergiant planet, there is no way that it would remain hidden. Even amateur astronomers and stargazers nowadays are making some interesting discoveries with their telescopes, and there is nothing that would have kept them quiet had they spotted a gigantic anomaly such as Planet X. Saturn is known for its abundance of satellites, but one of its more famous moons, Lapidus, is at the center of quite an interesting theory. Lapidus is being compared very heavily to the infamous Death Star. Sounds a bit like Star Wars. That's because it looks like the infamous Death Star from the franchise, with a large crater on it that resembles the fictional weapon's super laser focus lens. The planet-killing machine Death Star is able to destroy entire worlds all with its super powerful laser and people cannot help but let their imagination run wild. In fact, an article was even published claiming that Lapidus isn't even a moon, but actually a large articulate object created by aliens. The photo taken by NASA's Cassini spacecraft in 2004 was cited as evidence for the article. In the photo, you can see a line around the satellite's equator that resembles the equatorial trench around the Death Star, where the fictional one houses its battle stations, engines, thrusters, and docking bays. Pretty cool, but that's definitely not the case for Saturn's moon. The line actually happens to be made up of plain old rock and ice. So much for alien tech and weaponry. Cassini has done several flybys of the moon and has not been hit by any lasers. So it's safe to say this theory is a little out there, even though it would have been a good one. One day the world will go completely dark and be a huge void of, well, nothing. This may sound like a very morbid thought at first, but in fact for the universe, where it seems like the end is just the beginning of a new universe. According to one theory, everything in the universe is just in one big repeated cycle, and when the world goes dark and void, it will give birth to a whole new universe. This theory ties into the brain world theory and suggests that this is what happens when one cold and empty brain collides with another one, and if given enough time, it's actually bound to eventually do just that. Cosmologists Neil Turek and Paul Steinhardt believe that such a collision will generate a massive amount of energy that would be enough to create a whole new universe. This is what they are calling the Epirotic Theory. It was only more recently dubbed as the Big Splat by physicist Michio Kaku. There is no telling if this theory is true and when it could take place. Whether an intelligently designed simulation or a cosmic love affair, let's enjoy all the wonders of the universe as it is. So tell us, what's the craziest theory you've ever heard about the cosmos? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to Factnominal for more videos like this. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.